Testing. Okay. I seem to have audio. Hi. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's been this this video has been a while in the making. So just to preface what I've been doing, I have been trying for the last three years to create an AI that can play games, or as it turns out, to implement a currently created AI to play games. So what you're staring at now is a image of Mario. Uh, I mean, he's he's on the second level, but ignore that for the time being, because that's, that's about to change, it's about to reset. But you can see on the right-hand side a bunch of, you know, names of stuff and numbers. This is Dreamer version 2 that I have implemented, there it goes, onto Super Mario Land, the Game Boy version. Now, it's doing pretty well, you know, all in all. Um, which hopefully in a, in a few seconds you'll see start moving. But the the challenges that I've come across with this is that I'm not trying to do this in a... There we go, off it goes. In a stereotypical... Not stereotypical, in the way that... See, it's just going right at the moment because it hasn't actually fully started. Give it a minute. Um, I'm not trying to do this in a way that a lot of them have been done so far. So let's go back to the history while Mario plays Super Mario Land. So this is fully full AI. I'm, I'm not doing anything. My, my hands are not touching anything. Uh, there's no clicking of keyboards. There's no nothing. This is all fully, fully code. Um... I started off when I discovered Send Dex and the GTA series, and I very quickly then discovered stuff like Neat and Stable Baselines and things like that. And I discovered YouTubers like um, Nicholas Renault, Rene, I can't remember, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, Cobullet. More recently, the guy that did the Pokemon Red experiments. I can't remember his name. Like 50,000 hours of PPO playing Pokemon Red. You know, it's it's crazy. But one thing that a lot of these implementations have in common, um, Lucas Thompson being the guy that did Neat, I discovered him quite early on, that a lot of them had in common was that they used um, Python and Jim to run their games so their games were super sped oh that's an early die that's an early death um they're super sped up but they're multiple environments um you know the 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 game only moves when an action is made you know all that those kind of open ai gym atari kind of style things and I have implemented some of that, I, I could, you know, but that's not really ever been what I wanted to do. I didn't want to recreate the game in Python or in Unity like CodeBullet does. Um, I didn't want to have to use a completely Python emulator like um, the guy who does the Pokemon Red experiments does. I wanted to have AI play a real game in real time on a real emulator, shall we say. So this is RetroArch right in front of us. The game is always moving. It doesn't move only when an action is made. So Mario's just finished the first level there. I've done five and a half million steps. And so the game emulation, the code is in Jim. This is a Jim code. So it can be used across multiple different AI codes, AI agents, um, reinforcement learning, you know, stable baselines, uh, you know, PPO, R and D, whatever. I've you know I've tried a few of them. Um, I've only recently managed to get it working, which is what we're looking at. Um, so the game is running at four frames per second. That's how many actions? Four actions per second. But the AI Dreamer version two is running at sixteen frames per second because it's action repeat of four. Um, so I'm really super pleased with it. The fact that it's doing this is utterly amazing i've managed to get it to, it started learning level three which i think is is insane um i do want to at some point try dreamer v3 to see see what it does because i mean it gets the life here but it doesn't pick it up you know it, and it's 
it wastes all its life on the first level to get the maximum score, which you would expect. You know, that's kind of what the AI is trying to do. It's trying to get the highest score, which is in the top left. Um, and it's not look, really looking at anything else. It gets a little reward whenever it sees something like a new state, kind of like Go Explore. That's what I base that on. Um, but it's not using the Go Explore first return, then Explore. But anyway, returning back to... <clears throat> sorry, I've got a really bad cold, so my throat is... I'm just going to have a drink. Ah, so, returning back to how I got here, I discovered a guy called Serpent AI. He streamed on Twitch mostly. He's the guy that managed to write PPO and get it to beat one of the bo- the first boss in um, Binding of Isaac in something like 10 million steps. Um, I watched all of his streams. He hasn't streamed in like six years. But that fascinated me. And I was like, I- I've got to try this. So... Like, I really want to be able to do this. Like, wouldn't it be cool if I could have a an AI that can just learn to play games? You know, not none of this, like, set by, you know, you're stuck with retro, um, gym retro or gym. Because the problem with those is that the score is done via internal parts of the game. Like, a bunch of the Pokemon Red experiment stuff is all internals of the game. It's all RAM. So, moving that on to another game, I did manage to get it to work on Mario, but I don't. I want to be as close to real time and as the way humans do it, quotation marks, as I as I can get because I think that's kind of like the main goal is we're trying to make AI like us, you know, artificial general intelligence. So having it have access to the internal RAM of a game doesn't fulfil that dream in me. So this. You know, I could take the code behind this and I could run it on another game. With very, the only thing I'd have to change is how the score is gotten and how, like, death, how the environment is reset. That's it. That's all I'd have to do. Everything else would work exactly as is. And that would work on any other Game Boy game. I could do that with Pokemon Red. Or I could do that with uh, Biden of Isaac, for instance. You know, it it's generalized and that's the way i've always wanted so hopefully when mario completes this game i'm going to keep it running um i've been running it for about a week to get five and a half million steps i mean that, that's the craziness because i'm running it real time i'm running it on one environment there's no there's no shortcuts here you know it's got to be done as if you're teaching a baby how to play video games i mean it's quicker than a baby but you get the idea so Mario has, in those five and a half million steps, learned to complete level one, burning all of its lives, learned to complete level two without dying, because it has no lives. It hasn't learned to pick up lives yet. It hasn't learned to go down um, tubes. I'm wondering whether it will. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it is still semi-exploring. I did try the plan to explore version, but it just, no, it wouldn't wouldn't learn. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at it go. Like, this is madness. I love it. Um, it's only in the last 24 hours has it made it to level 3. So the end of level 2 is still very much an uncertainty. Sometimes it gets it, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to have to have another drink. Hmm. But you, you get the idea. Um, so if there is interest in this, which I hope there is, I may start streaming it um, if people want to watch Mario Learn or if people want me to try other games or try Dreamer V3 or other um, algorithms or whether they want to watch me code, if they want to see the back end, if people want me to upload to GitHub, like I'm more than happy to do those things. But um, anything I do means I have to stop training. Because this is using all of my computer. Like like I said, this is not a gym environment, so it's not running in the background. I, there's no headless version. Like, this is live playing of a game. So my whole computer right now is dedicated to this game. You know, I'm running a 3070 Ti, um, a Ryzen 3 700X, and 32 gigs of RAM. And it uses 22 gigs of RAM currently with the... Uh, one and a half million replay 
size. It, two million was too much. We couldn't do it. I, I, I would like to upgrade my RAM at some point because I think I might need to if I want to run Dreamer V3. Um, which I think would be necessary to do games like Pokemon because of the nature of having to return back from where you came from. And I don't think Dreamer V2 is quite able to do that, but I haven't tried it. So anyway, yeah, if the, if you have interest, if people want to see this, um, then I am more than happy to to put it live and to give people access to the back-end code. Um, you know, maybe you'll be able to do take this even further than I've been able to in the last three years. I'm sure that there are far more intelligent people out there than than me. Um, and this is I'm I just for some background. I did not know how to write Python code before I started this project. My limit my limitations were HTML and CSS. It always worries me that last that jump because he only just makes it. Um, but yeah, I I learned Python to do this project. <coughs> Excuse me, I am ill. Uh, one second. Mm. So, uh, if there anyone, if if I can do this, anyone can do this. So, if if you know, if you're also someone who stumbled across this and has lofty dreams of programming something with machine learning, I'm so close to getting that life. Um, and you're like, oh, I don't know how to write Python code. I don't have a degree in machine learning. I haven't done any training, nor have I. You know, I've banged my head against a brick wall until I got it. There we go. Level two complete. Let's move on to level three. Um, but just to prove it, I'm going to tap on the table with both my hands. There you go. You can hear me going while it does this. I should be doing that while it's actually moving. Not while. There we go. So this is my right hand over here. It's my left hand over here. Yeah. Just trying to prove. Uh, maybe I should get a camera up really at some point. Um, maybe I'll do that again if there's interest. Um, I mean. Uh, I think I've done something that hasn't been done. I mean, I don't know. Um, I follow some of uh, the YouTube coders, but of the YouTube machine learning, reinforcement learning. I, d I don't know. Maybe someone else has done this. Maybe someone's gotten further than me. Who knows? Anyway, like I said, if there's interest, please let me know and I will do more. I will do more videos. I will do streams. I'll show you the code. I'll give people access to it. I don't mind. Thank you for watching if you got this far. Um, hopefully. We'll see. Leave a comment, like and subscribe, whatever, um, and I'll do more. And we'll, we'll see where this ends up. Thank you.